I'm sitting here looking through metrics on YouTube and I discovered there's a section that will tell me what type of operating system the device is that you guys are watching videos on. So there's the normal stuff. There's like Windows, Android, iOS, Macintosh. Then we get into things like PlayStation, Chromecast, Xbox, Linux. The thing that's really strange is there's a significant number of views from WebOS devices. That means somebody out there is using a Palm phone or tablet to watch these videos. Now, I actually really liked Palm back in the day, but it's been gone for a while now. Not only is it still a thing, there is about six times more views from WebOS than there is from Windows Mobile. And Bo, if you're watching, that's a jab at you. Yes, we're bowling. First time using a ramp. to go down to the store and <coughs> okay a little bit of nebulizer action there um while I was doing that I just got a notification on my phone that one of my Pokemon needs some attention and treats from me but what's interesting is I have not loaded the app in over a week so I'm curious now where exactly this one is that's still in a gym anyways while this game's loading up uh, so the plan is to go down to the store, get some more coffee. Uh, definitely out of cold brew. Well, running out. This is the last bit here that I made. It's not really a whole lot of exciting stuff going on today. So I'm gonna go down to the store, grab some coffee, and then we're gonna come back. And I realize I have not checked out a few of the wheelchairs that we got a couple weeks ago from the big dumpster raid. Those are over in the other parking garage inside my other van. Uh, so after I get some coffee, get that brewing, we're gonna go check out those chairs and see what's going on with them. I know one of them powers on, the other one supposedly works, but I don't know. So, yeah, well, we shall see. I'm gonna look at my journal here real quick and see what exactly was going on. Where on earth was that? I haven't put a Blissey in a gym in like two and a half weeks. What do you want to say? I just had a Blissey get kicked out of a gym this morning. That must have been when we were playing a week or so ago. I, uh, I sent a text to my friend, maybe he'll know which gym it was in, because we went around like crazy and did a whole bunch of gym raiding stuff. I just got a response back. It's the Oregon Mural. I've been feeding your Blissey and Pokemon their golden raspberries. <laughs> okay, cool. So that's the one. I don't know if I... I've got some video footage of it. It was this really weird area and I was in my newer, faster chair that has the easy lock bolt and it kept dragging on the ground and we kept trying to get stuck, but I've got some video clips of that. So we're trying to go to this uh, gym that Jacob really wants to go to and we're in this industrial area. My chair will not make it over these train tracks, so. Oh, you're in range? So we're gonna try and go down here to see if we can get to it. It's, it's very close. So when you have an easy lock bolt sticking down at the bottom of your chair, it kind of digs into the ground. <laughs> not the most ideal thing in the world. <laughs> Well, as long as you're in range, you can knock it out and drop in. <laughs> oh wait, I'm a little closer now. Uh, nope, still not close enough. Uh, yeah, so it was down there, which is actually a really hard spot to get to. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Would you be able to grab something for me out of the case right here? on the top left of the dark blue lid there. It's one of those. All right, thanks a lot. Yep, thank you. There's always something, eh, always something interesting going on. 
I'm in here buying coffee and uh, I run into a friend. They were doing some shopping as well. Apparently there's some sort of reptile barn near here and they're gonna head over there in a bit and uh, let some tarantulas crawl around on them. Uh, so they're gonna finish their shopping and then get to do some studying at Starbucks or something. But they're gonna give me a call before they go over to the reptile hatch and uh, I'm gonna meet them there and watch spiders crawl all over him. <laughs> and by the way, since I posted that other video uh, talking about YouTube canceling my partner account, and uh, I mentioned that you guys could watch the 12 hours of cats, I've had like 6,000 more minutes of watch time. So thanks, thank you a ton uh, for any of you that have had that video open and running. We end up going with the old staple, McDonald's medium roast. Uh, this stuff has always been good in the past. I think what I'm going to do is cold brew most of it, but I'm going to use the two-hour drip brewer to get some of it going now because I feel like I'm going to want some coffee in a few hours, most likely. Miniature portable cold brewer is a very, very useful thing when it comes to that. All right, got some coffee in there, and the rest will go in the cold brewer. I finally added a proper switch to this little portable light I built. It's this cool thing that you pull up or down to turn the lights on. One thing I forgot to mention before about this OXO cold brew setup is sometimes this little switch right here, sometimes this little switch right here seems like it gets stuck. Notably when you're trying to turn it back off, you push down on it, no problem, but sometimes it won't go back up. The trick is you have to pull out, like in this direction on the switch and then it'll work just fine. I don't know if that's just a glitch that mine has, but pushing up, it'll seem like it's not gonna work. So just tug it out just a little bit, and then it goes up just fine. It took me a little while to figure that out. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's just mine that has this issue, but if yours is doing that, that's the secret. Oh good, it's leaking. Oh, dang it. Okay. Make sure you screw the bottom on tight, otherwise you, you end up with a lovely mess. Luckily, this is a glass top stove. I always make sure the bottom is screwed on tight or, uh, dang it, it's still dripping. Okay, apparently some coffee grounds or something got down in there. Um, okay, what do we do here? Uh, we're making a proper mess today. Jeez, uh, I thought all the water drained out. Dang it. Okay, I don't want to waste all this coffee that I just bought, but I'm doing a pretty good job of it. Okay, um, oh yeah, I got some crud down there in the bottom of it. After using this quite a bit, I think this little seal here in the bottom isn't quite working right. If you look real close at it, you can see how it's kind of domed upwards, so we're not getting a real good seal. I believe, I'm gonna just pop this off and uh, flip it over the other way. So now it's got sort of a backwards dome to it and uh, looks like it should seal now. I don't know if they sell replacement parts for these. I would imagine they do, but... Uh, I'm gonna test it this time and make sure it's not leaking first. Okay, looks like we're good now. We get to try and clean all of this up. I think we got a lot of it contained in this towel now. I'm gonna wait for this to dry and then just use the vacuum to, to clean up the rest of it. We are good to go. I kind of like this seat elevator. I'm like really tall now. This, uh, this brand of heavy cream is by far my favorite. They sell it at Fred Meyer or Kroger or whatever they call themselves nowadays. It's always interesting though, every bottle is dented. And if you go through the shelf, every single one of them's like that. But then I noticed the brand name. It's Mountain Dairy. As it turns out, these are actually packaged on a mountain at a higher elevation. And when you come down closer to sea level, where I'm at, which is about 63 feet, um, their pressure changes, so they dent. I just thought it was funny that the reason they're dented and their name Mountain Dairy actually makes sense. I do have a peculiar sense of what's interesting though, and that's probably high up on the list there is one of those things. 
So one of these people back here is definitely afraid of spiders. That would be me. <laughs> and her idea was to go hold some. Apparently there's a reptile and spider <gasps> store over here. Yes. And so, snakes. And snakes. Ryan's biggest fear. So both of you are gonna uh, have an awesome time here, I think. Yep. Here we go. Upscale fish and rest. Haha, <laughs> it's a pun. Upscales. Upscales. <laughs> She was like, I'm afraid of spiders. Let's go look at some. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, they've actually got a lot of stuff here. How long has this place been here? I don't know. I just discovered it like a few weeks ago. Turbo snails? Turbo snails. Nice. Yeah, they're... Aww. Kind of a pain in the ass, in my opinion. I love turtles. <laughs> you say turtles are a pain in the ass. Yeah, they are. It's a python. He's waiting for you to buy it. Blue cage. But it, he's hiding. Oh, he's right there. Look. Oh, I see him. He's under in the corner, Dan. Yeah, yeah. Is that like a little nest? Yeah. That's disgusting. something he was maybe is that why it's not here anymore do you do you think the do you think the one in that cage would bite i think they'd all bite oh. <laughs> if you if you like grab them you know but if they crawl on you they don't are they poisonous no but apparently those blue ones are like the most aggressive ones out of them so that's probably why <laughs> chase the, you down where's the other spiders Just there's ten? one more right there but we usually have there, but just a little pink toe here. Chilling in there. Uh, I don't know. Probably not, just because it's liability. Oh, okay. Probably. Gotcha. When you break it, you buy it. Or he breaks you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We don't want to buy you. Oh, <laughs> I remember seeing him in here. Well, they were out of stock on the uh, spiders. Well, I mean, they had a few, but they were out of stock on the ones that I think they let people hold or something. Uh oh, I dropped it on the floor. Hope it's not broken. It says to turn it off and back on, which I did. On, off. Uh, I guess. I guess we'll pull the battery out. There we go. Battery back in. All right, I think we're good. So when I came in here in the dark just now, I wound up throwing the camera on the floor because I tried to set it on the counter. And then, it actually wasn't on the counter. I set it on nothing and it fell on the floor. I was hoping, well, this thing is insured through Best Buy. It's their, what used to be their black tie protection. I don't know what they call it now, but if I had broken it, it would have been covered. But I think that's probably the second, probably the second solid drop <laughs> that I've done with this thing so far. And it was powered on. So I think it hit the lens and then freaked out or something. But I think we're still good. I think now I'm gonna go check out those wheelchairs in the other van. I know one of them, it turns on, but the battery light's blinking, so I wanna try and stick it on the charger. The other one won't power on at all, but supposedly the guy said it works. So there's only one power outlet and it's in the bicycle shop. So I'm gonna try and find an extension cord to pull it through the fence, hook a charger up, and see if we can get at least get it powered up enough to move it around. All right, we've got uh, a few different chairs in here. Uh, this one is a C300. Uh, this one actually powers on. So this one powers on, but there's some sort of problem with the seating system and it, it for whatever reason, like won't tilt using these controls, but you can do it through the menu on the screen just fine and it works fine. Wait a second, this thing has an elevator? Holy crap, this chair has an elevator. I didn't know that. Awesome. And then also we have the Quickie S626 here. This is the same model as my soccer chair. 
So this is the one I'm interested in. I want to get this thing plugged into power. I want to hook this thing up to the charger and see if we can get it to power up. I'm gonna put this thing back on the lift and uh, pick it up so I can see what's going on. I think the batteries might be too low for the charger to detect. I'm gonna leave that thing plugged in over there for a couple of minutes. And uh, I think I've got another charger in the back of this van, but I have to pull it forward to get the back doors open. I found with chairs like that, um, sometimes the batteries will get so low that the electronic chargers will not even detect that there's a battery present. So I've got another charger in the back of this van that's one of the old school solid state transformer ones. Uh, so we're gonna try using that instead. All right, I think it's buried back here somewhere. Uh, it's in this pile somewhere. No way I'll ever take that it goes on and on. Every day taking out more weight. On and on. Every day about to lose my faith. faith. On and on. Could take a nail, but I say no way. way. On and on and on. It goes on and on. Every day taking out more weight. Way. On and on. Every day about to lose my faith. All right, we're still not getting anything there. Um, so I'm going to take this chair over and plug it in just to make sure the chargers are in fact working. Well, I'm gonna have to take that one upstairs and uh, figure out what's going on. I'll probably have to hook the manual battery charger up to one individual battery, charge it up, actually charge both of the batteries up independently just a little bit to a point where the charger sees some voltage. Because when they go dead enough, uh, these chargers just won't recognize there's even a battery connected. I've got that other C300 sitting over there charging for just a couple of minutes, uh, just because the batteries were so low in it that uh, it could potentially stop moving at any moment. So I'm gonna to top that thing off just a little bit and probably stick it back in this van and then we'll take the other chair over there upstairs. Although pushing that thing all the way back to my apartment's gonna be kind of a chore. Uh, might have to get the other van and uh, put it in there and then drive up to my apartment on the same floor. This is a serious game of musical wheelchairs. Well, managed to bring this thing back in here. I've connected it to another charger that is actually really good, but it's still not recognizing there's batteries connected to it. So, this is an old trick that I've used occasionally in the past. You get a jump box and connect it up to one of the batteries. And what that does is puts at least 12 volts into the system, and that should be enough, and that should be enough for that charger to kick on. In these chairs, it's pretty easy to do because the batteries are right here, easy to get to. All right, we've got the batteries pulled out and connected them up to the jump box. So in theory, as soon as I turn this on, that battery charger should detect that something's happening. There we go. Now we immediately turn this back off and see if the charger continues. It did not. So let's try it again. Okay, it's saying there's an error. Let me grab a voltmeter and see where these are actually at. I got the voltmeter out and checked. There's less than one volt in this battery. Um, so what I'm gonna do is disconnect the charger 
Then I'm going to leave this battery connected for a few minutes and see if the charge equalizes a little bit and see if we can bring it up to some small amount. None of that seemed to work. So it's time to get out the big guns. We've got the very large battery charger and it also has a voltmeter and everything built into it. So let's connect that and see what happens. All right, we've got it connected up here and it's showing five volts, which that thing was able to charge this up just a little bit to get five volts. Uh, so let's put it on a very low setting and see what we get. Now this flashing light here is telling me that there's a problem with the battery and it's trying to put in 17 volts, which makes sense. So we're gonna let this sit for a little while and uh, see if it comes back to life. All right, we got the thing to start charging. Uh, what I did was connect this charger up to both batteries to bring them up to about eight and a half volts each. And I unplugged this and then plugged in the other charger. Very important that you do not have both of these plugged in at the same time, because that will create a ground loop and things will catch fire. And as you can see here, this light's flashing rapidly because it thinks the batteries are almost charged. That's typically what happens when batteries get damaged or really old. So essentially we just leave it connected up, cycle that thing on and off, and do this slowly while monitoring voltage and temperature of everything. And assuming the batteries aren't too terribly damaged, we might be able to bring them back to life. Maybe. What are you doing over there, Mo? What are you doing? You guys chilling? I think that's enough screwing around for one day. I'm gonna leave this connected, keep an eye on it, and hopefully tomorrow sometime maybe it'll come back to life. I don't know, but I do have another set of batteries over here that I was able to revive from the C500. Worst case scenario, I can plug those into this thing and see if we can get it up and running. Right now, the electronics don't seem to be powering up. Usually they do when it's connected to a charger, so I'm not sure what's going on with this thing, but we'll find out later. I'm not quite sure how to approach this subject, but long story short, I went ahead and created a Patreon account. I don't know, when I first started doing this video stuff, I was pretty regular doing stuff like every day. And I mean, I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just filming and uploading and whatever, you know. And it started off as just kind of something for me to do as sort of just like a journal of what I do. Cause my, with, one of the things with uh, TBIs or brain injuries is your memory is not real good. And that's one of my many problems, aside from the spinal cord issues and some other things. But I've kind of started changing the way I do things and kind of feeling out sort of what I'm doing. And uploading every day just for the sake of uploading didn't seem to really fit what I'm trying to do. I, I first created the Patreon account and I was like, oh, this is cool, you know, people can pay or whatever. But then I thought, that's kind of weird. I, you know, if I don't upload something regularly, I feel like people are paying money for nothing. Although at the same time, there's a number of YouTubers that I have subscribed to for like a dollar a month. The way I see it, you know, a dollar goes quite a long ways, especially when you have a large group of people. So if you guys want, feel free, but by all means, I'm not asking you to, I'm just telling you. <laughs> I'm setting it up and I've set a few reward tiers on there. For a dollar, uh, I'll put your name or a nickname at the end of the videos. I think three dollars, um, I do a shout out where I'll display a picture or just some sort of phrase or something that you want uh, put in a video. And for five dollars and up uh, per month, I'm gonna send out, it says it's a bumper sticker level, but it's gonna be, that was a weird sound, it's gonna be just like some sort of little decal that I make that has the channel logo and some sort of picture or meme or something on it. It'll be different every month, but it's stuff that I make here with my sign making machine over there. But anyways, I, it's kind of a mental thing. I, I feel like as soon as people start paying me directly for stuff I'm making, it kind of changes the game a little bit. There goes the air conditioner. And I feel like it's more of a, a job or, I don't know, I, I guess it's motivation. Give me some accountability, you know. I don't think I've ever gone more than a week without publishing something anyways. And even at that, I still feel all right about it. Anyways, I, I'm rambling. I'll put a link down below. If you wanna check it out, fine. If not, seriously, no worries. <laughs> um, this was never about money. It was just kind of a hobby, something to do. Uh, and the ad revenue was nice because it's just something that, you know, happens. 
although I guess there are a lot of ads on my videos, especially the longer ones. By the way, there's someone out there that needs this SD card shipped to them so they can program their chair. It'll be in the mail tomorrow morning and you should receive that shortly. By the way, thank you for all these Starbucks gift cards. I'm gonna do it in another video, but if you have an Invacare wheelchair with the MK6i electronics, there's an SD card slot on the front of it. I can get you one of these cards, or make one rather, so that you can program the settings on your chair. No fancy tools required. Just buy me a cup of coffee and I'll mail one out to you. Uh, we'll just leave it at that. And uh, thanks for watching, I, I do appreciate it. it it's just one of those things that I'm, I'm glad I can help some people out, you know, whether it's just kind of following me around and seeing what's possible or, yeah, I, hate, I hate the cliche. It's like, oh, it's so nice that you're getting out of the house. But at the same time, you know, I have a lot higher function level than a lot of people. So it allows me to go out and do stuff. And I hope you guys enjoy the ride.